All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another episode of Advisor Access today. We are welcoming back the fabulous Kaylee Kirkpatrick, and we are going to be talking today about her recent adventure to Yellowstone and Grand Teton. So thank you so much for joining me for another chat about your adventures. I know we all enjoy living vicariously through your fabulous Instagram stories and posts, um, but let's dive in. So you just went on a family adventure not too long ago to... Yellowstone and Grand Teton, um, which in today's day and age, we are looking at a lot of domestic travel, uh, looking just in our, Yellowstone is almost in your backyard. By Californian standards, eight hour drive is definitely in your backyard. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, wh what prompted you to make this trip and uh, how, uh, how long did you personally go for and start off with how long would you recommend for somebody who's planning their own adventure? Yeah, absolutely. So it's so good to be here. Thanks so much, Krista, for having me. And um, we didn't plan it too far in advance. We just decided since it is just an eight hour drive to head on up there. And we did five nights. So three nights in Teton and Jackson and then two nights in Yellowstone. I would recommend about that length of time. Definitely you could add on an extra night in either location if you just wanted to really explore more, but you can hit the highlights in five nights. Fantastic. So let's let's start with Teton, uh, Grand Teton, and Teton Village. Um, obviously, there are quite a few hotel options in both areas. Um, they are not they're close, but not super close to one another. Um, so tell us a little bit about where you stayed and, and maybe some of the other properties that you saw while you were there. Absolutely. So. Jackson, the city of Jackson is a super cute area. And if you didn't know, Jackson Hole is actually the name for the entire area. It's not actually a city. It's like a lot of people think. It's um, the hole that is basically between the Teton Village and Jackson and that entire area. Teton Village is the um, ski mountain. So there's several amazing properties there to stay at. And then Jackson is a cute little Western town lots of boutiques, saloons, restaurants, um, all of that. But, um, and they do have a small ski mountain in Jackson, but if you're gonna go skiing, you definitely want to be over in the Teton Village area. So we stayed at Hotel Jackson, this cute little boutique hotel right in the heart of downtown. You can walk to anything from there. They have a great restaurant on site, rooftop hot, hot tub, um, a little library where you can relax and take cocktails. Yeah, definitely recommend it for anyone that's wanting to stay in the town of Jackson. But we also visited the Four Seasons uh, and Caldera House, which are the virtuoso properties over in Teton Village. And I visited a few other um, four-star properties in Teton Village. Which, uh, just, just uh, for those that may not be at the five-star level, which of the four-star properties in Teton Village did you see and, and recommend? I loved Hotel Terra. It's just right there above um, the Caldera house. And it has a really nice, clean, modern vibe, but with the still a little bit of Western influence. Great location. And for those that are not aware of how far apart Teton Village is from Jackson, from the town, how far is that drive? It's about 25 minutes. 25 minutes. So close, but not super close. Not an easy, easy pop in the car down the road type of thing. Right. And when we were there, there wasn't a ton of traffic between the two cities, but I have heard that definitely in peak times and especially during ski season, the, um, the traffic can be a little bit. That's uh, a good, good thing to, to budget in and, and think about when, when selecting the hotel that, that uh, you stay at. Um, between, the, between the two, obviously this part of the, part of the country is visit, you can visit year round um, and versus summer versus winter dictates sort of what activities you go for. Um, but you visited in the summer. So what were some of the activities that you did while you were there? Absolutely. So um, living in Colorado, we're really big outdoor people already. So um, my husband went mountain biking one day while my daughter and I went over to Teton Village. She did the like bungee fly trampoline um, thing over there. You can also downhill mountain bike in Teton Village. Um, then we also went paddle boarding one day. We went shopping, um, went to a lot of great restaurants like Snake River Grill found a really cute little boutique called Maid. Um, we also had lunch at Colette, which was a great restaurant. 
there as well. Yeah, so we made the rounds and did some hiking too, so it was a lot of fun. With just going on uh, restaurants, uh, obviously there's a lot of charming restaurants in both Jackson and uh, Teton Village, but what were some of your favorites, favorite meal or favorite dishes rather um, that you are on the must visit list? Absolutely. Um, so we were so lucky to have been shown, a, shown around by a local um, that's been there for years and years and years. And he took us to Snake River Grill on our first night and it was incredible. Um, Harrison Ford is actually an investor or part owner, one of those. And it was everything that we had was just incredible. Very good for uh, more upscale dining for one evening. We also had breakfast at Cafe Genevieve, which is a really famous, uh, cute little restaurant for breakfast. And uh, Colette is a brand new restaurant in town that our local friend told us we had to try. It has a like British pub, French, also kind of a French influence of the interior, and it's really, really cute. Um, great food, great service, loved it. Is that a more upscale dining venue as well or a little more casual? You know, it's, it's a little bit in between. The, the ambiance inside is really nice. So you, you could definitely do it for a more upscale dinner. We had it for lunch one day and very happy with it. And with the, obviously this part of the country is very big for families and family travel, uh, no matter what, what time of year. Um, would you say that these dining options would be suitable for children? Obviously your daughter went with you to, to those, but uh, what sort of age age for kids would you suggest? Yeah, Snake River Grill is definitely a little more um, iffy, I guess, if you feel uncomfortable taking your child to, you know, a, a quieter venue, then I probably wouldn't recommend that one for families. Um, but, you know, my daughter loved all the food there. So she was very happy with the options that they had to serve her. Perfect. And Colette's as well, good, not good but or not good for families? I would say that it was fine for families. I don't know that it was necessarily, um, you know, probably on, on a top list for her because she probably would have preferred something a little more casual, but I think that it was absolutely, there was, I saw plenty of children in there. It was great. So you wouldn't feel uncomfortable bringing a child, so to speak. (laughs) That's good to know. Excellent. Um, So let's let's jump into the the actual parks themselves. Um, So spending three nights in the Jackson Hole area, as I now am educated and know that's the whole area, um, what sort of outdoor activities? You mentioned paddle boarding, but you did some hikes as well. Are there hikes of various lengths, um, ability that that, uh, are available within an easy drive from, from the properties? Absolutely. So we started off by um, visiting Mormon Row, which is just kind of a picturesque spot to take photos of old barns with the Tetons in the background. And then we went into the park itself. Um, We did a hike uh, off of Jenny Lake called to Inspiration Point. Very easy for, you know, probably any child over the age of six or seven to do. It's about um, two miles round trip. And not a lot of elevation change, but really pretty. You go by a waterfall and then you get up and you can see a really amazing vantage of Jenny, Jenny Lake. Another cool thing you can, you can um, to get to that hike, you take a little boat across the water, which is just kind of fun. Um, That's readily available and you can, it just shuttles people across. Exactly. I don't remember the exact cost of it, but it was pretty minimal in cost to, to do that. You can also hike around the lake if you prefer not to take the boat. Um, that adds an extra two miles each way if you prefer to do that. So you go from a two to a six mile hike to go around. Exactly. Um, And then we went and paddleboarded on String Lake, which String Lake is a connecting lake between Jackson Lake and Jenny Lake. Um, It's a little more shallow, which makes the water a little bit warmer. And it's pretty um, not as heavily touristed because it's just a little bitty lake. And we had a great time paddleboarding there. Super fun, super fun. And from Jackson, you went up to Yellowstone. Uh, How far is that drive for you? Or how far was the drive for you? Yeah, it's about 90 miles from Jackson to the south gate of Yellowstone. So hour and a half or so. So pretty close, a little bit far for a day trip, but but close enough to combine the two very easily. Um, And where did you stay up there? 
We sit it under canvas, which is what my photo background is. Um, under canvas is somewhat of a new concept in glamping. They have um, locations popping up all over the United States where they offer just really amazing glamping opportunities in most of our national parks. Um, and is that is under canvas in the park or is it very close by to the park? It's right at the West Yellowstone Gate. So it's about 10 minutes from the west entrance of the park. So still very scenic, still very accessible, but not physically in the, in the national park. Exactly. And you know, one, I mean, there's several reasons why you might not want to stay in the park itself. One of which is that there is absolutely no cell service in Yellowstone. So if you're somebody like me that has to kind of be on, um, sometimes it's nice to stay right on the edge of the park so that you can, um, you know, connect with family or clients what you need. You know, Check whatever. back in at the end of the day after your, exactly. your adventure. That's, that's an excellent tip and, and certainly something I think most people aren't even thinking about because where do you, where, where almost where can you go these days that doesn't have cell service? It seems like more often than not, you could be in the middle of the ocean and still have some type of service, which is exactly. strange to even think about as well, but there you go. <laughs> um, so at, at Under Canvas, um, what did they offer activities there? What was their dining option like? Obviously being a little more remote, you're not going to restaurants in town type of a thing. Right, so there are tons of activities to do at Under Canvas, including you know, tons of like lawn games, horseshoes, ladder, um, ladder ball, uh, giant Jenga, giant connect four. They have, you know, fire pits everywhere, whether you're roasting s'mores. They also have scheduled activities every night and some mornings like yoga in the morning or, you know, live music at night, movie night. Um, really, you could spend a ton of time there just enjoying all the things that they have set out for you to do. Um, the restaurant is right next door, um, like a five minute walk at the max. And it's incredible. The food was really unexpectedly amazing. I, you would not expect a, um, you know, when you go camping to have food that was of that caliber. A gourmet meal. It was so gourmet <laughs> and a, and a um, you know, great bar too. So it was, it was excellent. So during the day, uh, how did you how did you tackle Yellowstone? Obviously, it's a very large park. Um, how did you sort of frame the days that you were there in the park? Yeah, so um, we drove up on the first day from the south entrance in Jackson, and then toured the um, east side of the park, and then the um, on the second day we did the west side of the park, basically. So Yellowstone is laid out in a big circle basically, that you just drive around. It's about 140 miles all around the circle. Um, and the circle hits every one of the major attractions, which makes it super easy um, to navigate. So the first day we went biking and hiking around uh, Lake Yellowstone. And then we went over to the falls, which the falls are um, was my favorite thing that we did. And we did a couple of different hikes around the falls. And then we went up to Mammoth Hot Springs, which is your background. <laughs> and then um, called it a day from there. And then on the second day, we, oh. Uh, oh, no, I was just, I was just going to say, did you, did you rent bikes while you were there or did you bring your own bikes? We brought our own bikes. Since driving there, we brought our own bikes and paddle boards. Um, I'm sure you could rent bikes somewhere. I did not see a lot of bike rental. And there aren't a ton of bike paths, honestly. You have a lot more hiking options in Yellowstone than you do biking. So um, I wouldn't say it was a necessity and you might end up disappointed if you spent a lot of money on bike rentals. And So um, hiking over biking in Yellowstone. Over biking for sure. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, on the, on the second day. Yeah, the second day. So second day we um, tackled the southwestern part of the loop and then uh, the southwestern part of the loop has um, Old Faithful and the Grand, Pris Grand Prismatic Springs. Those are two of the most famous things in Yellowstone and they were amazing and I'm so glad that we saved them to last so that it just felt the anticipation the whole time. Um, Old Faithful goes off about 
once an hour, 80 minutes or so. So, you know, you never have to wait too long to see it. Um, Grand Prismatic, we saw from two different vantage points, did some hiking around there and then called it a day after this too. So, And all of the trails that you hiked, were they very accessible, easily marked? Uh, again, love different levels of, you know, whether you have an active walker or an intense hiker uh, type of client, were they were they pretty easy to navigate? They were pretty easy to navigate. Um, we did mainly pretty easy hikes because I had my daughter with me. And so, um, you know, just for that reason, we didn't do anything. Outrageous. Exactly. Uh, the hike to Fairy Falls is the one that's really famous right next to Grand Prismatic Springs. And I definitely recommend it. Um, and from that same area, you get a really nice overhead view of the springs. Fabulous. And on uh, on the trails, I assume, are there any type of benches or rest rest stops, uh, anything like that for, for people to, to sit down if they needed to? I'm just thinking of if you were going on a multi-generational trip or something. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't see a ton of them. and But there are lots of different options to be able to see most of these uh, big attractions, I think it's perfect. Yeah, attractions, yeah. attractions inside Yellowstone that don't require a lot of walking. So if you had people, you know, of different um, activity levels that, you know, somebody really wanted to get active and go hiking, you know, somebody else could sit and have some, you know, something nice to look at and enjoy while they were waiting for the other members of their party. That's excellent to know. I, I'm, I'm sure that many people traveling to, to Yellowstone, even within their own kind of nuclear family, may have different levels of activity. Uh, some want to do way more, some want to do less. So being able to, to know ahead of time that it is still possible to see all the major attractions uh, and you can send off the people that want to do the outrageous hike uh, to do their thing and then, to, you know, have a few hang back is, is good to remember, especially if... if Yes, might be traveling with grandparents or something like that that aren't as aren't as mobile uh, anymore. Right. So certainly something something that to keep in mind. Um, were there any other? Did you do any horseback riding while you were there, or were there any type of options for that that maybe you didn't do, but but it's possible to do type of a thing? Yeah, there were lots of different options to do horseback riding in Teton Village and in the, you know the Teton area. Um, I didn't see as many in Yellowstone in the park. Yellowstone really, um, I would reserve for mainly hiking and seeing interactions. Perfect, excellent. And then other other activities besides hiking in, in Teton, perfect. Um, so you mentioned that the ideal, you, you were there for five nights, but really one could spend four nights and three nights and sort of make a week out of it if they, if they felt so inclined. Um, is there a minimum, an absolute minimum, if someone was whizzing through or perhaps combining it with Mount Rushmore or some other, other site sort of in the same vicinity, if you will, uh, is there an absolute minimum length of time that you would, would suggest? I would definitely think that in Yellowstone, two nights is minimum. That 140 mile loop is just, it's, um, it's a lot to see in a day and it got very exhausting to try to hit all those hot spots in a day. Um, as far as Jackson goes, you could probably do Jackson and Teton in the Teton National Park in two nights if you, you know, were trying to whiz right through. Spending one day in, um, you know, Teton National Park and then one day in the city of Jackson. Yeah, it's and unfortunately, some people move too quickly and don't always listen to our recommendations and advice of adding that extra night or extending their stay one more day just to, to really round it off. But I'm, I'm sure you probably agree that's always the, the best word of advice for any trip is to, if you have the time, one more day and, and you'll always fill it. Absolutely. Um, excellent. So of all of the things that you, places you ate and things that you did, what are your unmissable moments or unmissable dining recommendation? Uh, I know we talked about three of your favorites, but if, if you've got one, if you had to pick one, what would it be? <laughs> Snake River Grill, for sure. Snake River Grill, all right. And as far as hikes or trails or activity, if you had to pick one? Definitely hike down to the lower, uh, the brink of the lower falls at Yellowstone. Um, in the, the falls area. 
There are three different vantage points to see the falls from Artist Point, um, Uncle Tom's, and then Brink of the Lower Falls. I really recommend trying to go see all three of them because they're spectacular in their own way. But I'm so glad that I did the hike down to the brink because you can just feel the power of the waterfall from there. Excellent. Uh, and one thing we didn't discuss, I know we, we talked about under, under Canvas where you stayed, but if you were not staying there, are there any other places that you would recommend or uh, properties you visited that are either also just outside of the park or even in the park? I would say the Lake Yellowstone Hotel and Cabins on Lake Yellowstone. Um, it's been recently redone and, and Lake Yellowstone is just really cool and you can, you know, do all sorts of water activities there. I think it would be a nice way to spend a couple evenings. And that's, that is inside of the park. In the park. Mm -hmm. In the park. So no cell service. <laughs> service, exactly. <laughs> Wi-Fi only, maybe. <laughs> um, fantastic. Well, one other um, piece that we didn't also didn't touch on earlier was uh, you obviously drove to uh, Grand Teton and Yellowstone and drove home. But for those that are flying in and out, Jackson does have an airport uh, that's very well connected from most of the major hubs around the country uh, to get to. So for most people that are flying in and out, it's a one-stop connection typically. Um, if you're really lucky, you've got a non-stop, but um, maybe a one-stop connection. And then for those guests that uh, would like to drive, renting a car and doing kind of one big loop and coming back from Yellowstone back to Jackson to return the vehicle and leave or continue on uh, perhaps even further north or, or further east uh, to some of the other uh, recreation areas or national parks would also combine pretty well with it. But I just wanted to, to mention that because um, uh, I wish that I was eight hours away and could just jet over it. That would be so perfect. <laughs> so that is a huge and fabulous kind of deep dive into this part of the world. Um, before we say goodbye for today, are there any other tips or tricks or little last minute gems that, uh, that you would advise for your clients visiting uh, the Jackson Hole area to experience? Yeah, so two more really quick uh, pieces of advice. One in Jackson, make sure to stop by Fighting Bear Antiques. The gentleman, Terry, who owns it is the world's expert on Molesworth furniture, which is just really interesting. And he's a super nice guy with uh, just a wealth of information. And when you're in Yellowstone Park, uh, try to stop by the Boiling River, which is close to Mammoth Hot Springs. Um, it was closed when we were there, but it's supposed to be just a really cool swimming hole experience with um, hot springs mixed with a river. So you kind of get this Ooh. hot, cold sensation. So anyways. Sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Kaylee, for your time today. This has been really wonderful as always. And for those of you watching that maybe haven't watched our first video about Disney World, Find it on our channel. It's well worth a watch. Um, and with that, we'll wrap it up and just say, if you like today's video, please subscribe below and you'll get notified of our next advisor access video. Thank you again, Kaylee. It's always, as always, been an absolute delight. Thanks, Krista. Bye. Bye.